amateur researchers of Baku's history and architecture for recent 25 years, which evolved in a set of walking tours, articles, presentations. So what I'm going to present to you today is in no way a kind of academic scientific report. It's just a personal um, sort of observation of the architectural transformation that has uh, been kind of witnessed in Baku for a recent century and a half, uh, because um, a tremendous change that the city has undergone since 1870s all the way to this day, partially triggered by oil, industrial development, and stuff like that, had its own impact on the architecture and an enormous cultural and ethnic diversity that Baku had at the times of its most rapid development had a direct impact on the type of architecture we have and what I tend to call the phenomenon of Baku's architecture. But to start with, Baku was a really very tiny little book. We don't have it projected on the uh, screen. Let's just fix the uh, screen and off we go. So I'd like to uh, present this um, architectural transformation of Baku within a recent century and a half. And um, well, to start with, it's very symbolic that now we have this meeting at the office of the uh, Reserve of Icharishet. Yes, uh, just one final preparation to have a full screen picture, because I'm going to use some of the Okay, now we're talking. So, to track the transformation in architecture and image of Baku, we have to get back at least a century and a half ago. Uh, the area we're in now, the citadel of Baku, which is the uh, part of UNESCO's cultural heritage, is one of the oldest walled cities in the area. So the great advantage of Baku was that it managed to preserve its 12th century wall built at the times of Crusaders. And thanks to this wall, and actually as you can see in some of the pictures, we had two walls before the 1880s, we managed to preserve the inner part of the city that is a place where one of the 12 apostles of Christ was reportedly crucified in the first century AD, which is an indirect indication that Baku existed as an urban area, at least in the first century AD. The first written memories of Baku belong to Arabic travelers and they're dated back to 10th century. And the first and earliest uh, written records with the word Baku in it that were made by Arabic travelers like Alistarchi and Masudi already contain some information about oil. Yet, for a number of centuries, Baku was just a tiny transit trade center. No matter how small it was, it was very important because what made this city work, the combination of two factors, one of them was an excellent harbor, and the other was proximity to the trading routes, which made Baku a very convenient entry port, the transit trade center that provided the trades between north and south, east and west. Yet the city was overtaken by Russia in 1806, and that wouldn't change the image of Baku immediately. Well, it was not after 1859 that Baku became a provincial center. Before that, it was just a district center. But no matter how tiny it was, it had a very important role to play. Yet, the great change would come in 1872, when Baku became the place for a tremendous oil boom. Well, in 1872, the Russian authorities of the day introduced concessions in oil business. And that would really change the image of what used to be a tiny little transit trade center and convert it into a tremendous industrial place. So Baku was like a genie that was let out of the bottle. So the oil boom that started in 1872 well, increased the production of oil by 60 times within the first decade. And by 1901, Baku was making over half of the world's oil out. So that immediately changed the image of the city. So it used to be a tiny little citadel with 2,000 years of history, but only 14,500 residents in 1872. 
grew to 143,000 in 1901, and then a decade after, by the beginning of World War I, Baku was a city. So we can see the dramatic transformation of the place from a tiny little citadel in an entrepot to one of the beating hearts of industrial life of Russia and beyond. And by the way, these unique polygraphs date back to 1916 to 1918, when at the times of World War I, the Russian military commanders decided to use never freezing port of Baku to train seaplane pilots. So in 1915, when aviation was making first timid steps worldwide, hydroplanes were soaring over the Baku, and one of the elements of training of hydroplane pilots was this aerial footage. So we got this unbelievable heritage of aerial snapshots of the city, which far from every European city could boast of at that time. But this is a valuable evidence of the rapid transformation the city was undergoing. But to start with some figures, Look at the population of Baku. In 1806, when Baku became part of Russia, there were no clear census, the first real census. In 1810, we rebuilt 5,300 residents in the citadel of Baku. And it wouldn't grow too much until 1872. In 1872, we had 14 and a half thousand residents. Yet in 1903, it was 143,000. So the population skyrocketed 10 times within the first 25 years of the oil boom. And then it was doubling every eight to 10 years. And even New York didn't have the growth rate that Baku had at that time. And the result of this kind of growth was an enormous ethnic and cultural diversity of the city. By the beginning of World War I, not a single ethnic community exceeded 36% of the population in Baku. So the Zeris and the Russians were the two leading communities of 34 and 36% respectively. Armenians were the third largest ethnic group traditionally thriving in Baku and still missing their place. And by the way, we still have Armenian church preserved in the downtown of Baku. So the legacy is still preserved. And the fourth largest ethnic group were Jewish. And after Jews, you have Germans. And after Germans, you have Poles, and some of these communities varied from 4.5% of the population, like the Jews, to less than 1% of the population in case of Poles, but each of these ethnic groups had its own sort of niche in the city fabric. So while the Jews were the leading doctors and lawyers, and the Germans were the technicians, there was a phenomenon of, let's say, Polish civil engineers and architects that I will speak about later on. And of course, while this enormous ethnic diversity created a very competitive environment and this blend of various cultures found its way through Baku's architecture. But before we get to the point of architecture, there is an interesting